All right, we have a Bosch heat pump here, not working. And um, we just turned the thermostat on. We have nothing going on out here. Just a quick peek. Make sure this, I don't see a green light lit up on this. I wonder if we have no power. I don't see any power on this surge protector. I think they usually either have a green or a red light. Maybe the surge protector's cooked, but um, yeah, we just turned the thermostat on. I clicked, nothing coming on. So let's get into it. Right, the breaker's not tripped in here. I'm pretty sure these are supposed to have a some sort of light on it. I'm not gonna turn the breaker off. I'm gonna pull the panel and check everything in here first. Okay, well, I found the problem. This board is fried. I've already replaced this board once. Jesus. I'll have to see if Johnson Controls or um, Johnstone Supply has one in stock. Holy crap. I don't know what caused that, but. Jesus. I don't know. I wonder if they got. We haven't had any storms or anything around. I don't know if they got hit by lightning or not. Alright guys, I just got the phone Bosch tech support. Can't get one till Tuesday, so that's a bummer. Um, I don't know what's going on with these Bosch boards, but I already did one earlier this week. This one was replaced back in June. So, I owned everything out. owned the compressor out, owned the fan motor out, everything owned out fine. Not sure what's going on here, but looks like we're getting another control board for this thing. All right, guys, we have a Ream water heater here, tankless. It's throwing a code um, that simulates, I believe, um, that the burner needs to be cleaned. I wasn't the one that originally looked at this. Um, one of our plumbers did. And um, he came to the conclusion that it needs the, uh, the burner cleaned. So uh, we're going to do that today. But we're going to have to pull it off the wall because this he, he disconnected this and we can't get it back dis uh, connected without pulling it off the wall. But with it off the wall, we're going to get it out of this closet. Um, and then we're going to pull the burner apart. I have a disassembly instructions on how to do that. And we're going to clean this burner. So let's get going. All right, we got it off the wall here. We just got it sitting right on the on the floor. Um, so we can work on it and um, we have the instructions here so it's gonna tell you the required tools and stuff like that um, might even just take it right out to my truck because I don't carry an air compressor but I carry nitrogen so that will be good enough um, and then yeah we're gonna go through all this and we're gonna clean this so with it off the wall we've already done the first two steps now we're gonna remove the support bar from the water heater if installed not all units will have this piece the number of screws for the bar may vary depending on the water heater doesn't look like we have a support bar no it doesn't so we can skip that step and then uh, separate the halves of the overheat limit wrap and gently tuck them down okay so that's this so we're gonna gently undo these all right um i'm uh, if anybody's wondering how to do this i'll link these directions in the um the, the description but uh we're gonna work through these we got to disconnect some stuff and um yeah we're just gonna follow these steps until we get it we get it opened up all right we just uh removed the igniter control um now we're about to remove all these igniters and flame rods now we're just basically following through the steps Pretty straightforward. All right, moving right along, we have all these screws taken out along here, and then the gas valve screws. And we're about to go on to the next step, which is, well, inspect the gas valve solenoid gaskets. Okay, so I guess we're about to pull this off. It didn't say pull it off, but I guess we're gonna pull it off. All right, we got our burner cover off. And it says in the next step, um, 
You want to inspect the O-rings and stuff like that. And then we're going to clean all the orifices. And yeah, it, it shows you what a blocked orifice looks like. All right, we got the burner ribbon out now. We're going to inspect that, make sure it's clean before we put it back. So with that open, we can look and inspect the heat exchanger too. Make sure there's no blockages there. Actually looks pretty good. All right, we're just gonna follow the instructions on how to clean this. Yeah, it says here, clean any debris build up in the holes of the burner assembly using compressed air. It says, do not attempt to clean it by submerging it in water. Doing so could result in operational issues. So remember that, don't ever use a solution or water, just use a compressor and a brush or something like that. Clean the burner ribbons on the top of the burner using air compressor. Yeah, so we're gonna go ahead and, I'm gonna use nitrogen, we're just gonna blow it out. All right, we got our nitrogen hooked up here. This little blower and we're just gonna blow this thing out. Anything that's in there, we're gonna blow out. We're also gonna do the same thing in the heat exchanger. All right, so we got everything blowed out. We're starting to reassemble. I actually had to call Reem because a couple of these orifices here, I had no flow through. And I didn't know if that was by design or if I had like a really solid clog in there. And they said it's by design. So like these end five here, I had no flow through at all. So they said that is by design and we're good there. So, all right, we're gonna keep on, we're gonna reassemble this, um, blew everything out that I could. It actually looks pretty clean. So I'm thinking we might have another issue here besides um, uh, needing to be cleaned, but We'll find out when we get it reassembled and back on the wall. All right, we got our burner back in and we are about to put our gas valve back on. And uh, yeah, just keep on making connections. We want to make sure all our gaskets are in good shape, that type of stuff. So we're not going to have any leakage later. All right, we got it pretty much for the most part all reassembled. Actually, I think we have it pretty much reassembled all together. Um, now we're going to hang it back on the wall and uh, hook some stuff back up and we'll see if this made any difference. Like I said, it was pretty clean. I mean, I really don't remember getting anything out of it as far as dirt goes, but we'll see. All right, guys, well, we got it back on the wall. Um, I still got some screws and stuff to put in the flue, but uh, it's up there anyway. I got everything connected. I'm about to turn it back on now and see exactly how it does. If we made any improvement or it requires further diagnosis. All right, we've been running it um, high and low fire, kind of just cracking it on and off. See, we have two here. The, the unit that we're in here is for this water heater, but this water heater is next door. So it's easier just to control it from right here. I will go over there eventually, but like I said, that's a whole nother unit. I mean, I don't even know if the tenant's home right now, so it's just easier for us to control it right here, but it seems like it's been working in high and low fire. So we're gonna keep testing it and make sure our air code doesn't come back. All right, we got her wide open right now, friends. Um, it will never run like this, not wide open like this but we'll figure we test it anyway. If it's gonna run wide open, it's gonna run uh, with as much pressure as he wants. So let it run like that for a few minutes. Well guys, we've been running it off and on for a while now, so I think we're pretty good here. I might button this one back up. All right, it's running now with the cover and all on right quiet machine with the cover on it was pretty loud with it off but the cover on is very quiet so we're running just the sink now just the kitchen sink we'll probably run the shower and all too all right so i'm running everything now but the washing machine and she's ramping up Sounds like she's doing all right. So, 
All right, guys, but that's going to be it for this one. I hope everybody has a great holiday weekend. Uh, I'm going to watch Kenny's uh, first football game of the season, so that should be good. And, um, yeah, so don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys on Tuesday. Yeah.